So far I've introduced most of the basic features of ViewTestUtils. We saw how you can use the mount function to render a component. We saw how you can use find to find an element, for example a button, and use trigger to simulate a user event. Finally, we saw how you can use HTML to write some assertions. I think it's a good time now to move on to some of the more advanced features. The first thing we're going to start with is how you can test components using plugins. The most common example of this is probably Vuex. So what we're going to do is use Vuex and write a test using our Vuex store. Before we do that, however, we're going to do a small refactor here. I think we've outgrown our inline app component here. We're going to create a new view component file, a single file component, and refactor this to be a single file component. Let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new file in tests unit app.view, and I'm also going to install Vuex while I'm here by running yarn add Vuex at next. I've already done this, so you, I don't have to do it again, but you should do this if you're following along. Now that I've created this file, I'm going to go ahead and refactor and put my code in there. So the first thing we're going to do is move the template over. So let's go ahead and grab that one. I'm going to head over to my new file app.view, and let's go ahead and paste it in there. So the first thing we need to do is paste it in, and I'm also going to create a template, and that's going to house all of my HTML. The next thing we're going to need to do is create a script tag and put in our setup function. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to head back here and copy this setup function, and that should all hopefully work correctly. So I'm just going to grab this one and paste it in here. Finally, we need to go ahead and do an export default because that's what you need to do for all of your single file components. The last thing we need to do is import ref from view so we have the reactivity. So let's go ahead and import ref from view. With a bit of luck, everything should now work. So let's head back to our spec file and use our new component. What I'm going to do is jump up here and do an import app. And that one's just going to come from my app.view file, the one I just created. We can delete this one now. And with a bit of luck, everything is now going to pass. I'm going to save this one off and we can see it is now passing. And just to prove this is actually passing, I'm going to go ahead and make it fail. And that should then give us confidence that everything is working correctly. And this one is failing correctly. The count is now wrong. Let's revert that one and make sure the test is now passing. And our refactor was successful and we can be confident because we have a test to verify that. Now that we've made this refactor, the last thing I'm going to do is delete this data mounting option because I'm not using it anymore. So let's go ahead and delete that. And we're going to delete all the arguments to factory. Finally, we're going to save it off and everything is still passing. So let's go ahead now and start using Vuex. The first thing I'm going to do is update my component to use Vuex instead of using local state. So the first thing we're going to do is import the use store function from Vuex, which is how you access Vuex stores in the composition API. We're then going to grab an instance, a reference to the store by saying use store. And now we're going to change this from being a ref to a computed property. And this is going to read from the state. So it's going to be store.state.count. Now we're going to change ref to be computed. So I'm going to jump up here and import computed. Finally, increment is now going to be a mutation, which we're going to call commit on. So it's going to be store.commit. And we're going to commit an increment mutation, which we're going to define in just a moment. Now that we've done that, if we save this off, everything is going to fail, of course, because we haven't got a store yet. So let's go ahead and create a store and install it on the view component. The first thing we're going to do is import create store from Vuex, which is how you create a new store using Vuex 4 and Vue 3. And now we're going to create that new store right here. So I'm just going to say const store is equal to create store, and that's going to take an object of options. The first is going to be the state, which is a function, and we're just going to return a count of zero by default. We're also going to have a mutations key, and that's going to have our increment mutation, which is how we're going to update the state. So I'm just going to have state as the first argument and say state.count is plus equal to one. The next thing we need to do is install this store on our view component. Traditionally, in a view application, you would do something like this. You create your app by saying app is equal to create app, and then you mount the app by saying app.mount. In between here, you do app.use to install the plugin, and you might install something like the store or the router. So we're going to see how you can do this with view test utils. What we need to do is come down here and update our mount function. If you use view test utils and view two before, you might remember create local view. Uh, this was a bit of a necessary evil because back then everything would mutate the global view instance. However, this is not the case in view three. Each in, uh, plugin is installed on a separate instance of the app. So what we need to do instead is use the global mounting option. And this is going to be where all your global options go, for example, plugins and directives. We are using a plugin, so I'm going to pass the plugins array and we're going to pass in the store. And this is going to install the store on our component or on our application here. Let's go ahead and save it off and see what happens. If I save this one off, we can see one test is passing and one test is failing. The first one is passing, which is good news. However, the second one is failing. We expect it to have count of one. However, we're getting a count of three. What's happening here is we're using the same store across both of our tests. So in our first test, we're going to make the number increment by two. It's going to be one here and two here. However, we're using the exact same store instance down here. 
So when we do incrementing here, it's going to become three. What we need to do is make sure we're providing a different store instance for each test, instead of using the same global one, which is declared up here. Let's go ahead and see how we can do that. What I'm going to do is change this to be a new function called create Vuex store. And all this is going to do is return a new store. So we're going to say return create store, and we're going to close this one off. And this is going to give us a fresh Vuex store for each of our tests. The next thing I'm going to do is jump down here and create a new store, which is going to be equal to create Vuex store. And now we're going to get a fresh instance each time we call the factory function. And this should hopefully let us pass. Let's save it off and see what happens. And everything is now passing. Definitely a good place to be. There are some instances where you would not like to use a real Vuex store and you would like to mock the Vuex store. And that's something we're going to look at in a future lecture. For now, I think this is enough. So I'll see you in the next lecture.